My name is Leonie Small, currently retired from the Bureau of Prisons after 23 years of working in the Federal Penitentiary USP Atlanta, a job that I truly love to do, working with the inmate population and to see my impact on their lives and their impact on mine. My role with the federal prison system is that currently we're retired as the mentor coordinator. So for the past six years, I've been in that role. And as a mentor coordinator, I'm responsible for the reentry program within the Bureau, within my institution, and working with the enemy population to prepare them for successful reentry. I recruit mentors, I train them, work with the probation officer, and uh, prepare the inmates as far as get them ready for the process of the mentoring program, bring in volunteers and mentors that can help them with preparing them for reintegration. But there are two phases to the program. There's the incarcerated and the post-incarceration. So right now we're working with the incarcerated phase. The federal prison system is a very stressful environment. You never know what you faced each day when you walk in. You think you're going down, you walk in down the corridor to your office and all of a sudden something will happen, a fight or something was to lock down. And so you have to be able to just be flexible. You have to move. And oftentimes we think we're gonna do one thing, but then we're called to do something else. So we have many different hats that we have to wear within a day. So with having to work in a stressful environment such as that, but then you're still having to meet your, your role, whatever it is that your job description is, at the end of the day, you have to fulfill those obligations, but there are other things that are going on, and you have to be able to balance it. The Peace Education found us. And so I received a call uh, from the volunteers, Peace Volunteer, um, and they wanted to come in and share with us the program, wanted to introduce the program to us. And they told us about this wonderful program and they were ready to go, but there's a process that we had to go through. And so um, as I got closer to retirement, we kept in touch and I said, you know, let's make it happen. And the last 10 weeks of my, before retiring, we decided just to make it go, make a go at it. So we just pushed everything aside. I pushed everything aside. Um, did it in my own personal time in the evenings to make it happen because it was a program that I wanted the inmates to want to do it. And so we wanted it to be where it didn't impact anything that they were doing. Like, for instance, they have to work. And so I recruited for a minute by just letting them know that, hey, I saw this great program. I think it would help you. And I shared the lion, the, the lion and the sheep story to them, and they fell in love with it. So then I knew that I had an audience for the program. One day, a shepherd was guiding his sheep near a jungle. When he came across a poor, helpless little lion cub, There were no parents around, and the cub was almost dying. So the shepherd scooped it up and took it home. When he had nurtured it back to health, he put it in the barn with his sheep. Every day the little lion would go out with the sheep. One day, while the sheep were in the field, a huge lion stepped out from the jungle. and the lion roared mightily. All the sheep started running around trying to hide and so did the little lion. The big lion went over to this little lion, who wasn't that little anymore, and said, why are you scared of me? I'm a poor little sheep and you will eat me. Please don't eat me. Eat you? Don't you know who you are? I submitted um, what is called a cop-out to the population where they had to give me their interest, let me know if they were interested in the program. And the response was overwhelming. We had a lot of inmates that wanted to do it, so I knew then that we were onto something great. What we realized for me working in, that, in the environment that I worked in 
is that we were working with the inmates and giving them information, but we weren't changing their philosophy. So when I began to see it, it changed my philosophy as far as how I saw things and what peace was all about. And the way that Prem presented the information and when he walked in or when you watch him, it's just a calmness, it's just something about him that just keeps you centered. So it impacted me and the fact that it moved me to where I was eager and wanted to move others. The impact on the inmate population was tremendous. I saw when we started the class, they came in and they didn't know what to expect. Welcome to the Peace Education Program. The purpose of this educational program is to help you discover your own inner resources, tools for living such as inner strength, choice, and hope, and the possibility of personal peace. And so you've got a room full of young men, or a different age, or a different race, and a different their culture. And when they began, when we started off, they listened, but then after a while, it's like a flower, they began to open up. Choose peace over chaos. Choose love over hate. Choose respect over disregard. Choose clarity over confusion. And you will find, discover your power. And then the reflection part, they participate in the reflection part. For me, what was so amazing is that you see individuals that may live in the same unit, but they didn't communicate. But during the peace education class, they were able to form a friendship. They began to talk. What was so um, wonderful also in observing is that it was open for all religious groups. So everyone would come in and the Muslim guys, you would see them when it's time to pray, they would leave out, but they would come back in. And so they'll always participate. My office was in the chapel. So normally what you see is that different religious group have different days or they go into different you know, rooms and worship. But when it comes on to the peace education program, everybody was included. Everyone worked together. They support one another. We have um, one young man who didn't speak English and he brought his interpreter in. And so they were inviting people to the program. So it was really a program where everyone was able to respect and they support each other and they could identify with what was being said. And you begin to see love. It begins to be where when they first started, everyone was to themselves, but towards the end, they were looking out for each other. We began to see how the program was actually changing them because now everybody is in search of peace and they didn't have peace, but because of the program, they began to understand and find their inner peace. So if you don't have your peace within you, then you just don't know where to turn. You, you, you really are focused. So the program really helps you to, to focus internally and get a, get a whole clarity and inner strength. What I observe as far as how the program has helped the inmate population, uh, the lion and the, the sheep, they, that particular one, the young men who had, that have kids, they wanted copies to send home. So they were actually sending it home. They were sharing the information with their family. And that's when we realized that it was not about them, it, but it was about helping others. Or they would go back to the unit and they would tell others about it, and then they would come to the class. So those are the ways that we saw that it was helping. Not only that, but they were able to handle lockdown better. The things that used to bother them, it no longer, they, they, it changed them. You could see their philosophy began to change. They didn't worry about the things. They weren't eager to, they weren't upset, or things that used to bother them, you began to see a different in the group that was actually involved in the peace education program the clarity and what it focused on, it allows them to have that peace within themselves, that inner peace. So we've taught them a lot, but we've never taught them how to find that peace within. And so a lot of the problems that they were struggling with or why they were doing the things that they were doing, I believe, is because they didn't have that peace within. So by taking the class, 
they begin to understand the value of peace and that it's within them. Um, a good point is that I saw Prem and he spoke about the good wolf and the bad wolf. In our environment, we were always focusing on the bad wolf. And they didn't believe that they had a good wolf in them from what I you know, observed. And so by doing the program, they stopped feeding that bad wolf because they realized that there are options for them. So they were beginning to feed the good wolf. So there was a encampment of Indians and they had a chief. And one day the little boy came to the chief and he said, chief, I have a question. And the chief said, what? He said, why is it? that some of the people that are good some of the times are bad the other. The question is, the same people who are sometimes good, why are they bad some other times? And the chief went, well, that's very simple. Each one of you, each one of us, has two wolves in us, a good wolf and a bad wolf. And they fight. The bad wolf fights the good wolf, and the good wolf fights the bad wolf. The little boy started thinking, then he said, Chief, who wins? I think that's the ultimate question everybody would like to know. Who wins? Is it the good wolf or is it the bad wolf? And the answer the chief gave was the wolf you feed. That's the wolf that's going to win. Question. Just, I'll ask the question, you give the answer to yourself. Which wolf do you feed? Whichever wolf you feed is the strong one in you. People get philosophical about this, go, oh yeah, let's just starve the bad wolf. Excuse me, how is starving the bad wolf going to help the good wolf. Just because you don't give any food to the bad wolf and not give any food to the good wolf either, how's that going to help anything? You've got to proactively support, help the good wolf so that good wolf can be strong. And then it can conquer the bad wolf. The good wolf was always there. It was just starved. But by taking the peace education program, they began to change the things that they do. They began to feed you know, positive energy instead of negative energy. And as they began to feed that positive energy, you begin to see the change within them. I began to realize that what was missing was that respect for humanity and that love and taking time to understand and to communicate. And so when we began to look at it, you realize that a lot of times what was happening is that people feel as if they were, um, they didn't have a choice or that community, no one cared. But through the program, they began to realize that they did have a choice. And then you realize that peace is possible. And when you have gang members or different people come into the group that probably at some point in time didn't get along, but in the program, they were able to communicate. Then you realize that by putting a group together and speaking on something that each person want or their value, that you can change their outlook. Mm -hmm.